All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Orshi Herb Herbain, who is in, where are you today actually? I forgot to ask you. I'm in Maryland. Maryland, okay. And I'm in San Diego, Maryland, opposite coasts. So um, fantastic. And um, or she is the is a partner and creative director for Brand Three, and and so what we're going to talk about today is rethink marketing, the secret to making marketing work. Okay, so maybe maybe let's start. Let's flip it on its head for a second. Oh, by the way, you also want to introduce Caroline, who is there beside uh, or she there for everyone. And Caroline, feel free to uh, to to uh, interject with any comments you may have too. <laughs> Um, so, Orshi, let's 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 start it off like this, right? So, when you say rethink marketing, the secret to making marketing work, what are most people doing today that's not making marketing work? What's not working? What is not working is that people and small business owners in general they dive straight into tactics, right? When uh, when you think about marketing. Um, the average feedback on what marketing is, it's SEO, it's website, it's um, the radio ads, Facebook, social media. Mm -hmm. These are the things that are um, on top of mind. And small business owners in general would be all gravitating towards doing marketing versus the strategy piece of it. And that is sometimes the biggest missing link on how we make marketing work. Right. You need to think marketing in the strategic way of aligning your brand with an audience. And that's that's how we um, that's what we mean when we say rethink marketing, you rethink marketing in terms of branding. And there's a very funny story about that. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so brand three used to be uh, brand three brands that deliver. Right. And I. Uh, alongside my business partner, Matt, realized that we don't make traction with branding because branding is so misunderstood, right? So we are essentially a branding company, but wrapped in the marketing words because we are wrapping ourselves into what our customers value and everybody wants marketing. You know, they, they think they call a marketing company and they're going to get all those tactical things, but we really are selling branding and we're fixing and aligning the brand and then we can go to market and then do all those tactics. Yeah, because it's because it's kind of interesting, as you said. I mean, a lot of people approach marketing and 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 even people who've been doing it for a while, but they tend to approach it often from, as you said, from the tactics backwards. Mm -hmm. They say, okay, so we need to do a SEO, we need to do this, we need to do that, and then they push out on those platforms as opposed to as what you're saying is take a step back and strategically look at who your who your target customer is or or groups of them where they are and what they how they want to be communicated with and what what's value in communication that's and then you decide where where to go exactly exactly yeah so so how so how would you start a process like this if somebody was listening or watching and saying okay yeah we're we're totally wrapped up in tactics right now we've never taken a, a step back where where's the best place or how's the best way to start well, the, the process usually is an extraction process because we need to learn as much about the business as possible, right? But the, the, the main uh, objective in the discovery is to identify an ideal customer, right? So if, if there is a, a business that, let's just say they sell windows, right? They can identify an ideal customer. And sometimes... These ideal customers actually exist. You know, we would go into a business and say, well, who is your best customer? Oh, it's Billy. All right, so let's build the brand for Billy. And we need to figure out where Billy is and where we can find more of him. Because when I pose the question to um, our customers, hey, what if you had a hundred of Billy's? How, where would your business be? And they just in awe wonder like, wow, wouldn't that be great? Because he's a great guy. He's a great paying client. Well, let's go after that audience, right? So um, part of the problem with going tactical 
without a strategy is that you might bring in a whole bunch of unqualified leads. That's a waste of your team's time to weave through on who is worth talking to and who isn't, right? So if you're really building the brand, and by brand, I mean, is what you're going to put out there when you market, right? Uh, mm -hmm. that for the ideal customer, then you have a better chance of be bringing in qualified leads. Yeah, and no, uh, ab Absolutely. One, one of the things that you just said there, I just wanted to pick up on is, is because sometimes psychologically we have this thing where we think if we're getting in loads of leads, that's great. I always call it the feel good funnel. You know, you got loads of stuff. The fact that 90% of it is garbage, um, you know, you kind of like kick that down the road, but you kind of feel happy about filling, filling your pipeline. So it's almost counterintuitive for people to actually slim it down and really get targeted. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's, that's where we differ from, you know, other marketing companies, because there's a lot of companies who will align themselves with that. And you're like, Hey, we're going to get you leads, right? Tons of them. <laughs> and it's just the quality of those leads is that's very questionable. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, other, another thing I wanted to say, uh, you know, when I'm saying branding, I want uh, our listeners to understand that branding is something that they have, whether they built it, designed it, or have not touched it whatsoever, because brand lives in the mind of your customers or prospects per se, right? So if your website shows up in someone's, in front of somebody who is a potential customer, they will formulate thoughts and feelings about what they perceive, right? So we can deliberately design that perception. And that's what branding means. You know, it isn't your logo, it isn't your website, it isn't your colors, it, it isn't uh, something that you don't need because you're too small. It's something you have. And the best strategy is to, to not skip the branding step and really make sure that that perception is really bringing in and engaging an audience that you want to do business with. Yeah, and and I think that that's a great point. I was actually going to ask you that uh, to to explain branding because I do know a lot of people confuse branding with just with the the visuals. Um, and, and the other thing that you just said there, I think, is really important is that your your brand lives in the mind of your customers, and you have a brand regardless of whether you think you do or not. And the brand that you have often may not be the one you want. Well, and it often may be the cause of you not getting traction with your marketing you could be doing the right tactics right now because the end result is that you might be spending enough money on marketing you might be doing just the right things but your brand is unable to create traction once it's put out there in front of the audience mm -hmm. so, and do you think that uh, i mean brand has obviously always been in, in, important but we live in a world now today where it's very noisy there's a lot of things going on there's new products and services coming on stream we've got social media bombarding us we've got all these uh, digital uh, digital processes and services out there uh, how do you how do you get your brand to even get heard above the noise you do that by really understanding Billy, your ideal customer or whoever it is for you and positioning yourself to almost instantly be able to um, tell them the value you're delivering to them, right? So, so when somebody looks at a marketing material, whether that's on Facebook or on the web, uh, you know, magazine ad or here's on a radio the only thing they're thinking about is what's in it for me that's literally mm -hmm. what you're thinking about constantly and that's what you're thinking about when you're going out shoe shopping or choosing different brands right and then once you identified that something that's in front of you can solve your problem or whatever problem you're seeking to solve then then you can be captured so sometimes small businesses make the mistakes of being too creative Right. And it's too difficult for me to decipher what they do. I'm looking at a website homepage and I have no idea, no idea, even the naming. Right. So, you know, uh, if, if your if your company was to called it was to be called Nike, Nike doesn't mean anything to anybody. Right. And the mm -hmm. reason yep. Nike is so well known because they spent millions and billions of dollars on advertising. Right. So everybody knows they saturated the market, but small business owners don't have that 
um, budget, right? So it, it's much easier if you say, I'm Nike, but maybe my tagline is uh, sports gears or, mm-hmm. or, you know, sporting goods, right? So like right away, somebody is able to put your business in the right category of their brain. And it's, it, it's, it's that clarity that, you know, will be like, oh, I'm looking for sporting goods. Okay. And then now maybe we are socially conscious sporting goods. And, you know, we're speaking to our ideal adi- audience who want to wear like, you know, um, non-polyester or whatever, like, you know, all cotton products or something like that. And now we're selling our difference in what they value, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want sporting goods, but you don't value that, then you can go away. You're an unqualified lead. But if you do, then you're paying attention and you're like, oh my gosh, I always wanted socially conscious active wear, you know, now I'm here and I'm reading on because you got me, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting what you said there, because I do agree with you. I think there is uh, sometimes people do fall into the trap of think of trying to be too clever. Um, I always go back to there's a great quote from Spinal Tap, the, the mockumentary from years ago. I know I'm di- dating myself, but one stage one of them just said when they figure out something, they say, oh, it's a thin line between clever and stupid. And and I think there is a thin line between clever and stupid because you can end up, as you say, coming up with something that re- you think is really clever. It's really nuanced and all of that. But to your point, your audience are like, huh? And, and you've and you've just shot yourself in the foot. You may feel good about it. You may feel think it's really clever, but your audience can't relate to it. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, because of that noise that's out there and that bombarding of ad- advertising, you know, we literally have no attention span for stuff like that. I think a study showed that um, people and I have less attention span than a goldfish. So mm-hmm. you don't have a lot of time to explain to some, somebody that you are here for them, right? Um, and, and, you know, another, another mistake small businesses make is, is uh, they, they position themselves as the hero, right? They talk about, oh, we're family owned, oh, we are this, oh, we are that. And this is from Donald Miller's Story Brand book. It's a very good book. I recommend it to every small business owner. But, you know, they don't care, right? (laughs) And if you position yourself as the brand, as a guide to get them from A to B and solve a problem for them, that's when you're creating traction because they really want to see an outcome there seeking something they're trying to resolve a pain point and if you're telling me that you're family owned you lost me i mean i'll care about that down the road once you convince me that that you know you're a good choice to solve my my problem i'll care about all those things but not at the first time of engagement yeah and i think that's a really great point and i would hope everybody underlines that one because that is that is such a temptation as you said it's a great point later on once you've shown that you can do whatever they want to and they go oh and and we're a family business and you oh that's really neat or whatever at at that point you're you're open to hearing about that but not at the beginning because that's irrelevant to to the the issue or the, the whatever you're trying to solve exactly we had a a brand who i think came in with uh, you know, their their main headline on their on their website homepage was family owned for over 35 years um, landscaping company, right? But they really built like outdoor living spaces, just fabulous mm-hmm. outdoor living spaces. And when we changed that to you deserve exceptional outdoor living, you know, that's kind of what their customers wanted. They wanted just this gorgeous paradise in their backyard. And, and even you approach it with that that value point, right? And, and you know, hey, we are not heroes, but you deserve that and we can get you there, right? Type of mm-hmm. guide positioning versus yeah. here, let me talk all about myself and then nobody cares. Yeah, because let's right? face it, I mean, may, you know, let's face it, maybe your family's not a great family. So family owned isn't a great, uh, <laughs> isn't a great banner to be under. <laughs> But I, but I do. But it's it is funny. It's we get we get really tempted to, as you said, to place ourselves in the hero position. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. What do you? Where do you see the the future of marketing going? Because I think a lot of people are struggling with, uh, you know, particularly after the pandemic or 
whatever uh, and all of the noise and all of this stuff i mean people and all of the different platforms and all of this and i i feel like some people are getting paralyzed as to know what to do where do you think all of this is going well, we can't deny it that a, a lot of things are going digital, right? I mm -hmm. mean, you know, that whole pandemic just put us in this virtual world where a lot of businesses just had to figure out what to do, right? But, you know, instead of kind of contemplating um, what it's going to be, I would recommend to business owners to focus on their ideal customer because there are differences, right? There are audiences that will need that personal interaction even in the future. I mean, if your ideal customer is an old, old elderly person, you know, uh, that isn't necessarily going to be techn technologically savvy to, mm -hmm. to interact with you, then you don't want to uh, advertise on TikTok for them, you know, things like that. So, you know, it's where, where your audience um, hangs out. And I think if you are in tune with your audience and in tune in the changes, um, that are happening in the world and how you can meet their needs right uh, i think is is going to be the important one because if you know again a trend could be to advertise on TikTok, but it might not be relevant to you based on your audience right yeah yeah no absolutely and nobody wants to see me dancing on TikTok, so give that one a miss <laughs> um one of the things that you mentioned there too i think is really important and i think this is a trap a lot of people fall into they may have either define their ideal customer some time ago. They may just have a gut feel. They sort of think they know who their ideal customer is. But to your point, your ideal customer can change over time. And and therefore, revisiting and making sure that you really do understand who your target customer is critical. Because I feel sometimes uh, we, we get kind of lazy and we may not have redefined them in a while. We may not even have looked at their behaviors in a while. And we just work off the assumption that they're kind of the same as they've always been. Yeah. And sometimes you have more than one, right? Yeah. Some, sometimes, uh, uh, um, a company will have both commercial and residential customer, a commercial mm -hmm. project manager versus a residential you know, somebody who just wants a new roof, for example, yeah. right, is, is, is two completely different mindset, and they need to be spoken to differently. And that's, I think, another uh, problem people make is that, you know, you send a postcard out, and you try to be everybody's everything in it. You know, let's also mention commercial, let's, all, you know, just, it just, it never works. Mm -hmm. The clearest way to success with marketing, in my mind, is to really take every piece of item that you're going to put out there and design it for who you're targeting and speak their language. So if your industry has certain lingos, you know, like, uh, you know, I was just at a door company and they were calling it opening openings are this and this. And I'm like, make a note of that, you know, because, because that's the, that's the, that's the word your customers will be using and seeking. And the more you speak their language, the more, uh, easy it becomes for them to trust you with whatever business they're going to give you. Yeah, no, I think that's a great point as well. And it doesn't take a lot of effort. It's, it's uh, in order to, to do that. Uh, but certainly, you know, as humans, we like it when it looks like you have at least done some homework or that you're trying to, to talk to us in the right language. We like that kind of, we like that kind of thing. True. And, and, you know, I, I, I it's not that I think, it's it's our selfishness in you know and every human has that sure. that that uh, makes us pay attention to stuff that's relevant to us you know i want to see myself in everything i mean if you just look back the old strategies right on gq you don't have put beautiful women you put men because the man wants to identify with that really strong muscular model on mm. the front of the magazine right so it's the same thing what can you um, do with your brand to make sure that your audience will choose you because they want to identify with your with your brand, right? And you speaking their language, it's designed for them, essentially. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, um, Orshi, this has been fantastic. Um, all of Orshi's information is going to be below this video, links to the website, etc. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and Brand3. Okay. So uh, Brand3, uh, we are located in Maryland, but we are mostly virtual. So we have clients all across the nation. Uh, we help business owners rethink marketing. 
and you know you heard me how <laughs> it is really that alignment that we create for our customers uh you can uh, visit our website brand3.net uh, and you can find me on linkedin and i would love to connect with you john and all of your visit, uh, listeners yeah absolutely uh although um, and apologize i don't know what i said to caroline to that she made her leave um so she's can... <laughs> actually right next to me in the chair so she just oh, okay. calls it herself <laughs> all right well again thank you so much Orshi. thank you all for watching and listening and i will see you all for another inside interview really soon thank you thank you john appreciate it